Hi, I'm Alan Ross. I'm the managing editor of APC Media. This is Distributech International 2024, interviews with thought leaders. Enjoy. So I know a little bit about you, but tell me how you got into the industry. Well, in the industry, I got uh, actually when I was in school, I was loving this electrical part, and energy part anyway. And uh, when finishing the school, I was in the way to decide whether I go for the university or I do something practical. And I grew up in Germany, but I You said go to university or do something practical? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. And yeah. uh, it's always something where I just said, okay, I like always um, doing something to create something, to yeah. money, to design something, to installation and wiring. That's why I said something practical. Okay. For me, it's a very important topic. Um, and this was for me personally also something where I always said, I want to learn this also from a different way. So when finishing the college, I decided to do a three years apprenticeship program in a utility, one of the largest utilities in Europe and Germany. So I did a three years program in power generation, transmission and distribution. Oh, wow. That's, so, that's where you are now. Yes, yeah. that's, that's where I'm, I am now. And I started this 23 years ago, 24 years ago now in the meantime. And uh, for me, I did a practical program in that and worked also parallel to the studies, uh, after that I went to the I theory am. and uh, academia. Um, I did it as a system operator for seven years in a utility industry before okay. I joined Siemens. That's my background, where I came from. That's where I also learned the power system operations. And this over the steps, how I grew into this energy industry before I joined Siemens Energy. Okay, all right. So um, you've seen enough of the industry to know that uh, there, you know, we call it the hockey stick effect is a little bit of change, a little bit of change, a little bit more, and then where are we going from here? Talk to me about where we are in the power industry in general. I mean, you can talk Europe or you can talk Europe, North America, but where are we in general? Because there seems to have been a lot of change in the last five years, more so than in the last hundred. Talk a little bit about what you've seen. Let me, let me give an analogy on that, because okay. um, starting in the apprenticeship on the system operation, I was seeing the control of the grids uh, was done basically something where we saw the mosaic boards where you could switch and turn off lights and, and also transmission lines and connectors and everything, turn them on and off via going there and turning the switch. That's what happened 20 years ago. But what is happening now is basically complete redesign of the grid because we are talking about integration of renewables, which is also something where we have to adapt actually much faster than we did in the past. If you now look at the controls of the futures, if you now look at how the control of the grid is done, it's much more dynamic, yes. it's much more automated, it's much, much faster. In the past, we were talking about um, frequency and system balancing every 15 minutes. Now we talk about seconds and, and now we have been discussing to do it in milliseconds and everything. That's where the energy is going and that's where the industry is going. So it's much more managing the complex grid in much faster speed because that's needed to manage this also complex power system that we are going to do. Right. And so we've seen this change and the, the next generation of change is going to be even faster, right? Um, we'll talk about Siemens a little bit, Siemens Energy in a little bit, but the idea that we think we've seen enough change, we haven't seen anything yet. A lot of other things are coming into play. But as you look ahead, project, if you will, what are some of the most significant challenges, opportunities, threats, whatever you want to call them, that we're facing in the grid? In the past, this was mainly about um, integrating renewables. Yeah. In the past, it was also mainly upgrading the power system. Now what is coming on top of that in the future is the complexity which we have to manage. In the past, you were always trying to say, okay, can we do it faster? Can we do it also in a way that we can also increase the speed of reactions and everything? This was optimizing the power system. Yeah. Um, and the technology was a completely different one. Now if we just look at the IT industry and the technology which is available, we are talking about edge computing, we're talking about uh, capabilities of the power system in IT, which is completely different. So when we now talk about how the grid of the future is going to look like, what kind of technologies are going to be there, and how actually the system is operated, we're talking a lot about much more computing, much more intelligence, much more automation. There is even the vision that the future power system is going to be fully autonomous and fully automated. And we are talking a lot about new technologies which were never in this industry, like AI and everything. 
this is a topic which is coming and this is also going to be something which is going to be a key role for the grid of the future because the system operation is not something which was classically you have a generation, you have a transmission, you have a distribution and then you have consumers. It's mixed up and this mixed up operation of the power system needs much more intelligence than it had in the past. And that's what the future of the grid is. So, uh, you, you know, I use the term and, and we did something and you helped clarify for me. It seems like from the old, you know, step down thing, now we have, for some people, chaos. And chaos just means di disruptive change. We have disruptive change in generation. We ha and it's not over yet. We've got hydrogen coming and we've got storage and we've got all of those things besides wind and solar. And we have a lot of disruptive change at the distribution level with prosumers and everything changing there. And then the transmission has to change in order to balance all of those. Um, when I, it's going to take an autonomous, but it's also going to be taking a flexible. Now, let me add to that. Let me ask you how you adjust to this. Extreme weather events, cybersecurity, physical security. I did a panel um, recently at a conference, and it was on physical security. I was shocked to find out how many people are shooting transformers in the United States, in seven in North Carolina, uh, a whole series of them in Hells River Canyon in Idaho, in uh, Sacramento municipality. Just, there's so much of a, of a change coming on top of change. Does the autonomous grid, or a, a self-autonomous grid, does that take into account those things, or is that something we have yet to account for? This is something which is taking in account that what is going to happen, exactly the examples you are giving, but also the complexity which is coming. And you're saying also correctly, there is a chaos on the distribution side, there is a chaos on the generation side, if you want to define it as a chaos, the transition that is happening. Um, what is going to happen in the future is something where the role of the grid is going to be very essential. If you talk about electrification, if you talk about consumers, we want to have electric cars. We are much more dependent on energy and electric energy than it was in the past, which also means that the importance of the grid is going to be completely different than it was in the past. Yeah. If you had an outage in the past, it was like, okay, you have an outage, you have a blackout, maybe you have to worry about what is in your fridge and, and hopefully it's, uh, everything is going to be well. But now it's much more connected to that. It's mobility connected. It's entirely society applications, everything coming to that when we talk about electricity means also that the physical security availability of the power system is much more critical. Although there is chaos, it is increasing, but the availability and the security of the supply is even going to be more critical than it was in the past. And this is exactly what you're talking about. And autonomous grids and automated grids are exactly these things to make sure that we have this availability of the power system because you can't react if there is an attack, if there is something happening the system has to be more automated, the system has to be more self-healing, resilient to that, in order to make sure that there is availability. And that's actually one of the key topics which is, that needs to be addressed and which is addressed with the autonomous grids and automated grids. Okay, now tell me about Siemens Energy. What is Siemens doing? Siemens Energy is relatively new, mm. but what is Siemens Energy doing to help, particularly utilities, or help the entire, reimagining of the grid, if you will. What's going on there? Siemens Energy is actually the leading technology company when we talk about um, delivering products and solutions in terms of um, generation, also in the transmission area and distribution area, to make the supply not only from the product level on the high voltage, medium voltage products and, and generation products available. Siemens Energy is also active in, and this is our unit basically, uh, active in the digital grid area. That's how we call these activities to make actually this automated grid happen. This is something where we are working heavily on planning the power system, how the scenarios for the future grid are going to look like, what does it mean for our products, what does it mean for our solutions, but also providing these products to our customers to have highly automated grids. Um, we also talked about the asset digitalization, for example. Now the grid is changing a lot. And the assets availability and information about the assets, what is actually the current status of the asset, what can I do 
what is the system condition and what is the system condition if there is some disruption happening in the power system, if the flow is going to change because wind is not blowing, yeah. but suddenly sun is there and can I now manage this? Uh, can I dispatch this? Can I also manage the congestion? That's exactly what Siemens Energy Digital Grid is doing. So providing the solutions for digitalization of the assets, connecting the digital products to the power system operations with the automation, managing the grids with the energy management systems, and then of course planning entirely this uh, system operations, making sure that there is a stability guaranteed from the power system availability. That's what Digital Grid is doing. And this is also something where we are also looking into the new technologies like AI, digital twins, what is going to happen with these assets and everything, how is the prediction of the power system okay. operations in, in 10 days, in one day, in next five hours. That's exactly what we are doing on this area to make Excellent. this happen. So in essence, you are the future. Yes, and I'm very happy and proud of that. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, Adnan. I appreciate it. Thank you.